Welcome to the Governor Pub at the Governor Inn on Elizabeth Avenue in St. John's. And if you are a homesick Briton or somebody who would just like to get the feel of a real British pub, this is the place to be because it has the wallpaper, the woods, the bar, the British style food, and most importantly of all, it has beer on tap. Hello. I'm Carl Wells, food critic and food journalist. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. And Steve, you must be particularly happy today, my friend, because this is the British-themed episode of One Chef, One Critic. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the I waves. certainly feel at home, Carl. Yeah. We've got lots of content yes. on the show today from Britain, and uh, or British content, mm -hmm. I should say. Not just you, but then again, your accent gives you away. What do you mean accent? I don't have an accent. You have an accent. Right, okay. Well, <laughs> well, mate, uh, you just go ahead and tell the punters who's on the show today, then. Well, we have John Pullin, and he's the honorary secretary to the lieutenant governor, and at one time used to be the private secretary to Her Majesty the Queen in Canada. And we're going to be preparing a beautiful rib roast with Yorkshire puddings and all the fixings. Oh, a real traditional Sunday Absolutely. roast. Absolutely. But uh, private secretary of the Queen in Canada, that's uh, pretty heady stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Anyway, uh, John Pullin, is going to be telling us some behind-the-scenes stories of what happened on royal visits that he was a part of here in Canada. And we're actually going to London, England. You mean you're going to England? Yeah, yeah. well, now don't be like that, Steve. I mean, after all, you're from there. You were born there. You, Would it be you, nice to you already know what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what it looks like. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I did bring you back something, though. Oh, okay, a package from Mum? Uh, no, not exactly. <laughs> but you'll find it. It'll be a surprise. Anyway, Good. let's tell the folks what our British-style appetizers are like here Well, today. you couldn't get any more British than this, Carl. We've got a beautiful bangers and mash, mashed potatoes, sausages, and some gravy. And, over and I have a scotch egg, which is a hard-cooked egg in the center, as you can see, surrounded by beautiful sausage meat. It's coated with a bread coating and then deep-fried. So, let's get started <laughs> and have fun with our British episode. If you're in a restaurant, be it London, Scunthorpe, or St. John's, the important thing is when you send back a meal, it should be taken back without argument. Well, I'm excited to be in the One Chef, One Critic kitchen today because it's our British-themed show. Now, when you think of Great Britain, you can't think of that wonderful island without thinking of the royal family. And our guest in the kitchen today is a gentleman who's probably met more members of the royal family than anybody else in this province. He was the Queen's Canadian Secretary uh, at one point and currently he is the Honorary Secretary to the Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, the Honorable John Crosby. And we're happy to welcome John Perlin to the program today. Thank you for having Great me. Great to have you with us, John. And uh, I guess I don't have to ask the question, where's the beef? No, no. no. It's right in front of <laughs> it's you. It's there, right. <laughs> Did you bring it? <laughs> no, but I... Uh, You're going to eat it, aren't you? Yeah, I'm certainly going to eat it. <laughs> well, when you think of Britain, Stephen, mm. it, it's... Beef is what you think about, you at least for me. It is, John, uh, Carl. It's uh, yeah. very, very traditional. And what we're going to be making today, John, is we're going to be making a beautiful roast prime rib yep. with Yorkshire puddings and all the trimmings. So, yum, yum. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what I'm going to do first like is just get some <laughs> nice and salt, and nice salt and pepper on there. And it's very traditional. Um, England is very known for its seasoning, mm. salt and pepper. Not so much with the herbs. So lots mm. of pepper on there. And I've got some beautiful sea salt on there as well. So just, gonna, just basic mm. salt and pepper, right? Salt and pepper. We're just going to crust it. I'm not going to cover it, and I'm not going to put any water mm. in, in there either as well. So um, what I will do now, I'm going to turn the, I've turned the oven on to 450 degrees. I will put that in there for about 20 minutes, mm. 25 minutes, and then we'll turn it down to a roasting mm. of uh, about 350 mm. degrees. Now, because of the magic of television, I've got one already ready. I'm going to bring that one out of the oven now. So. Oh, you are? Oh, absolutely. So soon. <laughs> so soon. <laughs> this is going to be the fastest cooking uh, segment we've ever done. <laughs> and the reason I, I would bring it out now is, as you can see. Oh, because you're going to put the Yorkshire pudding. I'm going to make the Yorkshire pudding. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. That looks absolutely amazing. A wonderful roast there. And a wonderful aroma. Yeah. Absolutely. And the reason I want to take it out now, mm. Carl and John, is... Um, yeah, I can just move that away from me now. Is the secret to a nice tender roast mm -hmm. is to let it rest. Yep. And I want to let that one rest 
Oh, for a good half an hour, three quarters oh, of an hour. Okay. Yeah. So what it's going to do is going to seal all them juices in there, mm. and you're not going to cut it through now because it'll all start spraying apart. So now the secret is the Yorkshire pudding, of course. So, ah. so we'll get you to work now. We'll put that there. And while maybe Carl can ask you a couple of questions, what I'm going to do first, though. Well, I wanted to ask John, actually, uh, how many members of the royal family have you actually met? Don't know. Can't ask Too you. many to... <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really, Carl. Well, but, obviously you know, you've met Her Majesty the Queen. I did, yes, and uh, the Prince and Princess of Wales when they were here, or Diana, the late Princess of Wales, uh, Edward, uh, the Earl of Wessex, uh, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, mm -hmm. you know, quite a number. How did you find uh, Princess Diana and Prince Charles when they were here? Well, they were, I th they were quite in love at that time, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, and I think the thing was that uh, she had become like a movie star and yes. people I, I think it was very difficult for him in a way because nobody really wanted to talk to him if you watched crowds at, at airports and and on routes and things like that he would be on one side of the of the road and she would be on the other and everybody would be crossing the street even to tr try and and shake hands with yes, her yeah. or touch her she became very much an uh, you know an icon in, yeah. in her own time a real starlet sort mm -hmm. of yeah yeah what I'll do now, John, I'm just going to put the, the pan in the oven. What I've done, I've just put a little bit of oil in, into the pan. And as you notice, well, this is a, a muffin pan, but underneath I'm putting an old tray there because a lot of the oil will come over. And I think you had a little story there. You tried to make yours pudding once and you had a little fire no, in the bottom. I now, I now buy mine from uh, <laughs> President's Choice. <laughs> no, actually, you buy yours at Coleman's, John. Oh, because Coleman's. Because they've provided all the ingredients oh, for our meal today. Do they have... <laughs> They have. Uh, they do. Yeah, they have pretty. everything at Coleman. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, well, they do. I yeah. do go to Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So what I'll do, John, I'll get you to start whisking. Right. Oh, we're going to have equal uh, the amount of egg to milk to flour. So there Carl, if you just want to put some... Uh, so how oh, much I milk can, should we uh, put in? Just carry on pouring. Oh, just, don't be shy. No, don't be shy. Don't be shy. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. All right, all right, all right. That's good, that's good. But I, it, I, I thought your... Um, safety net was a, a great idea and if I'd known that the first time I made Yorkshire pudding, <laughs> it, I would have had a cookie sheet <laughs> under mine. So now when, you, when you're involved in planning a, a royal visit, um, how much time is spent uh, figuring out what, what to feed the members of the royal family? Uh, you're usually given any no-nos. Uh, for instance, it's not because they don't like it, but they don't eat a lot of shellfish when they're on the road primarily because shellfish is one of these things that can mm. differ in various waters That's and things right. like that. Yeah. So obviously because they are on tour, they do uh, things really, to, they, they try and avoid things yeah. that might cause, say, a tummy upset. Yeah, and, and then they're out of commission yeah. for two or three and days that or means whatever, yeah. More than their being out of commission, it means disappointing so many people. That's true, that, yeah. You know, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Carl, do you want to put some salt and pepper oh. into, the, into the batter? Salt I'm going to be pepper. worn out. Okay, here's the salt. <laughs> That's good. And the pepper. How am I doing? Am I? No, doing that's pretty well. good. I just yeah. want to get a few of those lumps. You're one of the oh, best okay. stirs <laughs> we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's very good. <laughs> okay, You're gonna have to water so me. Steady on now. Steady on. Yeah, that's good. That's have I got yeah. the lumps out yet? Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. More about sure, that. Yeah. You see, it's just as simple as that. It's just oh. eggs, flour, and milk, a little bit it's of seasoning. It's in the cooking, Steve. It it's is in, in the, the cooking. cooking. Joy of cooking. Am I allowed to say that? Yes, That's you're allowed to say joy that. Joy of cooking. You see, when I looked in Joy of Cooking, they told me, you must close the oven door for 20 minutes. You're not to open the door. But I was very caught up in this because the black smoke was coming <laughs> yes, out of the course, oven. Yeah. So when I finally got up my courage and opened the oven door, I discovered the bottom element was on fire because the fat had poured out and I had to blow the fire out and I had to put cookie sheets underneath. And they could have been near the yeah. famous St. John's fire, you know. So I've bought ready-made ones ever since. <laughs> there you go. Okay, that's good then, John. We'll just leave that there. The, the oil should be hot enough now, Carl. And John, I'll, I'll bring these out. Beautiful, nice new oven there, yes. Carl. Now, uh, there's one thing I was interested in. Uh, the Queen was here, um, I don't know how many years ago it was. 97 now. was 97. the last time. And when she came, a lot of people were a little bit taken aback by the fact that she did not stay at Government House. What was the reason for that? Because there, everybody she wanted to stay at the hotel with me. Most, you know, most, most people, though, are, are under the impression that Government House is the Queen's house 
and that when she's in Newfoundland, she should stay there. Yeah, I think the problem, there are two, two factors in that. One, Government House didn't have really enough accommodation in this day and age to house all of the royal party. But there's a, a greater matter of security. Oh, I see. And yeah. it, it's not an easy house to secure. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, I think they were advised that uh, she w should stay at the hotel where they could provide the close security. Mm -hmm. But they, they, uh, they have two guest suites in Government House. And uh, so, you know, if you're traveling with ladies in waiting and equerries and things like that, uh, and secretaries. Um, for instance, when I was Canadian secretary, I stayed at Rideau Hall when the Sovereign was there, and her British secretary stayed in the Chateau Laurier because mm -hmm. I was the duty yes. secretary. So <clears throat> I think it's really a matter of expediency today. So when you were the Canadian secretary for the Queen, you were involved, I guess, in any Canadian visit that happened. Yeah, and, but you're appointed specifically to deal with a visit by the Sovereign. I see, okay. And, uh, okay, we'll just go back into the oven again. As you can see, I've just put, put that all the batter in okay. there. And there wasn't a drop left in the bowl, so that was good portion no, control, no, John. Very good. I, well, I'm waiting to see the black smoke. <laughs> that's, that's your years of training, sir. <laughs> there you go. Hotel and we'll leave that in the oven, mm -hmm. but the beautiful part about this oven is you've got a window in it, so you can see you can everything see, in there. And it's at eye level. It's at eye you've level. You've even got a light, and if I knew how to turn it on, <laughs> I would. <laughs> <laughs> and for the vegetables, Carl, we've got the carrots on there nicely boiled, so now we'll put the broccoli on okay, the steam. Okay, we've got uh, broccoli so here. Nice, uh, very green broccoli. Yeah. And it'll get oh, even greener yeah, yeah. now when we steam it. Okay, And there if you we noticed go. here on the roast, what I had before, um, I put some potatoes in about an hour before the, uh, the roast was ready. Put the potatoes in there, so it's going to get all that nice flavour through yeah. as well. Now, do you put something on the potatoes to... Just a little bit of oil, mm. salt and pepper, mm. and I basted them a little bit with the, with the drippings yeah. from, from the roast as well, do you see? So. Is it true, Steve, today that the meat that we get doesn't have the same kind of fat cap that we might have had when I Indeed was Indeed so, it? and again, that was be purely because of the rearing of, mm. of, the, of the, uh, the animals themselves. And, and purely because of the demand. Mm. People don't want to see that fat yeah. on there. They need to see it nicely trimmed, whether it be pork, beef, chicken, or whatever. So. The problem is when you take the fat away, you take the flavor yeah. away. Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> and if, if I remember my mother correctly, the fat cap would provide the, the fat, and she would actually make a Yorkshire pudding in with the roast. Well, so I absolutely. thought that was very good. I'm going to excuse myself because yeah. I've got to go and pick out a wine, okay? okay. I'll Thank be you. right back. Have you nice got anybody wine. down there with you, Carl? Yeah, you going to be okay? Probably, you don't yes, probably, yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay, perfect. Hi, Andrea. Yeah. Great to see you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Great, nice, nice yeah. to see you again. And uh, I, I was thrilled that you got to meet uh, Jeremy the other day. He's a sweetie. Yeah, yeah, he is, yeah. He can be a little bit temperamental sometimes. Oh, we had a great time. We swam in the pool, yeah. sat in the hot yeah. tub. It was great. So uh, today we have John Perlin upstairs. Hi, We're doing a British-themed... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, show today and um, he has uh, we have a, a beautiful prime rib roast mm. oh, beautiful with Yorkshire pud this is very traditional yum, stuff yum. so obviously we need to go with red wine so what 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 can you do for us today well last time I brought you uh, a wine from Yoast it was a white wine and today I have a Maréchal Foch Cabernet Sauvignon. A Maréchal Foch is uh, grown mostly in Canada, a little bit in the States as well, but it does really well in Nova Scotia. Blended with Cabernet Sauvignon, it's got lots of tannin, which is going to be softened by the juicy meatiness of the, the dish. So I think this is going to be a really great So selection. in Nova Scotia, do you think, uh, your opinion, do they do, they do a, um, a reasonably good job with both red and white, or I is, think is they one do. weaker than the other? I think they do, and they're choosing the kinds of reds that grow well. There are some reds that are more temperamental, more difficult mm -hmm. to grow. Cab Sauve is one of the easier ones, and Maréchal Foch is just designed for that temperament, okay. so it's yeah. ideal. The next one we have is really different and unusual. This is Massi Tupungaro. Mm -hmm. uh, Massi, as you may know, is an Italian producer. They um, have taken a project in Argentina where they're combining uh, Corvina grapes from uh, Italy with the indigenous Malbec from Argentina. They're doing a double fermentation process and they're also allowing the Corvina grapes to dry almost to the point of raisins. So it's becoming that Amarone, that really rich Raisiny. So does double fermentation mean higher alcohol content? Not or? necessarily. In this case, the alcohol percentage is only 13.5, so it's not 
off the charts, but it's beautiful balance. It doesn't register on the palate as hot. It's got nice tannins. It's going to be great with the dish. And I see a familiar name on that label, the, the yes. last one. Yes. Yes, Francis Ford Coppola produces wine. The, the film director. He really yeah. does, and he knows something about wine, too. Well, this is an absolutely beautiful Zinfandel. Um, Zins can tend to be higher in alcohol with the way they produce them in California. Um, they can be sort of, the fruit can fall out a little bit because of the heat. Mm -hmm. This one isn't like that. It's beautifully balanced, uh, lots of cherry, ripe fruit, mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. Okay, well, um, I, I was actually going to decant the wine um, and bring it upstairs. Um, when do you actually need to decant? I mean, it's nice to do for presentation, but when do you actually actually have to decant a wine? Well, there are three reasons you'd really want to decant a wine. Uh, first of all, if it's an older bottle and you've got some sediment in there, you want to rack it off so you're leaving the sediment behind. Uh, you may want to do it to warm or cool the temperature a little bit. And the other reason is if you have a, a young wine or particularly robust, you might want to open it up so that you're getting more of the flavor. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to try the Nova Scotian Red. Great choice. Yost, and see how that does. Anyway. Lovely to see, see you. See you later. Thanks. See ya. I can't get over these Yorkshire puddings. If I could ever produce them like that, I would go back to cooking Yorkshire pudding again. <laughs> I feel honored when you say that, John. It's too bad Cal wasn't here because the I food's nicely warm. What do you feel? Finally, honored? finally. We were just what do you feel honored about now? Yorkshire puddings, I got a compliment. Well, Oh, oh my gosh. I know you really, compliment me many you times. You really do. They, they well. are superb. Do, I mean, yeah, they are, aren't but they? But you Look see, he taught me a lesson today. Yes. You put a cookie sheet underneath your muffin pan. There we go. So what kind of a helpful hint. Today? A chef's tip. This is actually, it's a, it's a, I was surprised, it's a Nova Scotian red wine, which uh, Andrea was quite, uh, quite high on and, uh, well, not literally. But <laughs> <laughs> so it, is this a Because, of course, we're not allowed to drink on this show, John. No, we're allowed not, to look at no. the wine Can and admire it. Sniff, yes, yes. Sniff it, yes. Mm, the bouquet. This is from the Yost Vineyards, and it's a um, uh, Cabernet. Mm. Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, my gosh, look, I almost feel like uh, we should sing Rule Britannia. Yeah. Of course, yes. Because yeah. it's a magnificent, this is, re this is truly, it's Britain on a plate. And George Bush Sr. would really be happy with this plate because <laughs> he's it's got the broccoli. broccoli. <laughs> yes. Well, let's, uh, let's have we, a taste. Let's see how tender it is, yes. Oh. Well, I think you could probably cut it with a knife. Oh, you yeah. can. Well, look, you, look. you certainly oh. don't need these daggers because oh. it is extremely tender. Mm. Mm, really superb. Very, it is, yes. Mm. Very pleased. That is magnificent. Even though I say myself, so myself well, you know. The trouble with cooking things like this, you have to have so much done ahead of time. I mean, it all has to come out of the oven. The timing is of the essence, mm. yeah. Well, hopefully, folks have learned something about uh, Yorkshire uh, pudding today, for sure, and also about how to roast prime rib. And if you want Steve's recipe, go to the Central Dairies website centraldairies.com and you'll also find there on the One Chef, One Critic page, excuse me, I had too much in my mouth, uh, <laughs> we'll have a recipe from John Perlin and it's uh, his recipe for chicken parisienne. And courtesy of the slow cooking okay. cookbook. I can't, you know, can't take credit for it, but it is Cheers. Superb. Cheers. Cheers. For all those slow cookers. <laughs> For more of Chef Steve Watson's recipes, our recommended wine lists, and guest recipes, log on to centraldairies.com. Have a recipe that you want to share with us? Send it along to onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Be sure to attach your name, address, and contact number, and you and a guest could be eligible to win a dinner for two at one of our city's finest restaurants. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. When thawing meat, always thaw in the refrigerator and not on the counter where bacteria can grow. And it's time for pudding, which is what they call dessert in Britain. <laughs> Indeed we do. Now, why have a very traditional UK dessert here? It we is, have yes. a uh, berry cake, blueberries in this case, topped with white chocolate and a rum sauce. And I've got this beautiful light cheesecake with baked apples, uh, baked apple sauce actually, and a drizzle of Grand Marnier. Mm, kind of a Newfoundland uh, British mm, dessert there. Across the water. Now, we're going to go across the water, Steve, and we are going to go to London, England. We're going to go right to the Thames River and see one of the most amazing food markets in the world, the Borough Market. What?
My One Chef One Critic co-star, Steve Watson, will never let me live it down because I'm in the land of his birth and he's nowhere to be seen. Not only am I in the UK, I'm at the very epicenter of what was once the Great British Empire. I'm in London, England, one of the most exciting cities in the world. And when it comes to big cities, London takes a back seat to no one. This is Piccadilly Circus, by the way. London has something for everyone. It has theater, music, art, history, restaurants, and speaking of food, London has some of the best food markets in the world. I'm on my way to one of those markets now. But here I've run into this group of street performers in Leicester Square, a band called Dave. That's the thing about London. You never know what you might run into. Here we go. See what I mean? There's a film crew making, of all things, a television program about food. Wait a minute. Now, this is more like it. Look at that bacon. I'm in an area of London called the Borough, and behind me is the Borough Market. It's a large food market that sells wholesale and retail, and most of the goods in here were actually grown in Great Britain. Borough Market is a place where you'll find the biggest selection with the most variety of homegrown British food products. Vegetables from A to Z. Many types of mushrooms. A vast collection of birds, turkeys, chickens, coquelettes or poussins, partridge, pigeon, grouse, and various cuts of pork and lamb. Then there's genuine British beef. This is the stuff that Britain was built on. And seafood, lots and lots of seafood. Every species you can think of and more. There are many restaurants in the Bora Market area. This is a wine bar and restaurant, and right now I'm enjoying this lovely steak and onion sandwich with uh, frites and a nice glass of Merlot, which is uh, four pounds a glass. It's uh, on special today. Cheers. Now, here's something. They do sell other things beside food at the Bora Market. This is Chez Michel, and they sell flowers. There are lots of non-perishable items at the Borough Market as well. Excuse me while I check out this bakery stand. These pastries look absolutely delicious. Maybe I can bring one back to Steve. Second thought, too perishable. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little One Chef, One Critic mini tour of the Borough Market in London, England. The great city of London, England. And if you're, if you're ever here, you should really check this market out. If you're a foodie, definitely check out the Borough Market. And uh, you can also check out these wonderful uh, pan o raisin buns that they have here. They're really, really good. Oh, Steve, that was a delicious pudding. He certainly was, Cal, and my dessert was too. Now, did that item from England make you feel a little bit homesick for your native Scunthorpe in England? Cal, indeed it is. And I'm truly amazed that you made it back as well in one piece. Well, I did, and uh, not only that, I came back with a friend just for you. Winston. His name is Winston. The British Bulldog. Look, yes. He's even got the St. George's Cross on there too. Yes, the Cross of England. Yes. Uh, enjoy him. I certainly yes. will, Cal. Yeah. We will fight some on the beaches and in the air and in the shopping malls and restaurants. We will fight, fight, fight. Anyway, that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. Hello, Stephen. So nice to meet you. Mm. I've heard a lot about your cooking. I understand you're quite the chef. <laughs> Has he been in the cellar? Has he been in the beer cellar? I love I love champagne, I love cognac, I love British beer, and bangers and mash, and I love pudding. Lots and lots and lots of pudding, 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 pudding. Mm.